Yeah. Shall I be 100% honest? Is that alright? Yes, all right? be honest. If you had the struggle, just... Like, even like, how I came to Islam, honest. Yeah. in university um, and it was sort of um, the first day of secondary uni and um, there was the Islamic Society in the sort of um, I wouldn't say a convention area but it was all, loads of different stalls about uni all it's the different societies day. yeah open day exactly um, and on open day I found the Islamic Society and um, uh, they, they started like taught me and they were so welcoming and they just started telling me more about Islam stuff um, and they had like little welcome days and I went along to one of those and also one of my friends also reverted uh, she didn't have a husband or anything she just reverted off her own off her own back and um, she used to come over to my house and show me these videos um, of how Islam's a truth and it really sort of resonated with me um, and when I um, learnt more about it I, I you know, realised that this is something I wanted to follow in my life. Um, and then I um, met, um, met a sister and she started telling me um, more about Islam and how, what it means to be a Muslim. And then I decided that I did want to be a Muslim, a practicing Muslim. And she taught me how to pray and she taught me the basics of prayer. And she taught me um, sort of the fundamentals of Islam. And then I decided that when I went to university, I wanted people to know that I was Muslim. Um, so I started, I said I wanted to wear hijab. Um, so I started wearing hijab, alhamdulillah, um, September 2018. Um, and then I was part of the Islamic Society, Islamic Committee from there. Um, and that's how I really came to it. Um, when I first reverted, I... I didn't tell my dad at first because my dad is an extremely Islamophobic um, person and I had one of the major struggles for me was that I was new so I wanted to um, please Allah but I also um, loved my dad and I also wanted to please my dad. So what I used to do was um, I would at uh, my house um, where I lived, I would wear hijab, I would wear baya at university. When I would go home, I would take it off. I'd just look like a normal white British girl and go home. Um, and um, one of the really hard things with that was I had a, almost like a split identity. And also when I was at home, you had those kind of temptations of, you know, there's alcohol there, maybe the food there isn't halal, and you're thinking, oh, I'm hungry, they're having that, I, I want to eat that, you know. So that was quite hard. And the more I got um, familiar with Islam and the more I started to love it, the more I started to not go home, avoid going home, because I hated taking off my hijab. And I hated also lying to my dad, and it was so hard. Um, that I just stopped going home and, and I, I used to cry all the time and it was it was very hard because it was this fact of I, I'm lying, I'm lying to my dad and I'm displeasing him because I'm doing something that he hates yes. but I love it and it makes me a better person, you know and so it was really hard um, and one day one, one day, it was Ramadan um, and I bumped into my dad um, you know, I was out in um, where I used to live at home, so I, I didn't have my hijab on. And my dad said that, um, you know, I want you to come over, I haven't seen you in ages. Um, and then I started thinking, I reflected, I thought if I go home, I'll be tempted to eat. Uh, if I go home, I won't pray. I won't be able to do, you know, my night prayers. And so that, that night I decided to tell my dad. And when I told my dad, um, obviously, I, I, I was mentally prepared for the, for the kind of response he was, I was going to get. Um, and yeah. I went, I went to the retreat, I went to the, uh, the Aira retreat um, two years ago and through that, um, when I first went there, I hadn't like um, came out to my dad that I was Muslim, I, I wasn't like, yeah, um, but now, on this retreat now, I have came out, I have, I shouldn't really say it came out, should I? but I have mm -hmm. sort of revealed and told my um, parents that I'm Muslim and, you know, that was one of the biggest struggles when, when I first told my dad, it was a lot of um, hate, it was a lot of misconceptions, a lot of almost uh, racism, Islamophobic, Islamophobia, and you do think at that time, you know, I'm never going to get a relationship, I'm never going to, I'm never going to repair this relationship, my, my dad's going to hate me and I, you know, in Islam you're supposed to love your parents and have those relationships with your parents but how can you have those relationships when your parents hate your religion and stuff but alhamdulillah over the years um, 
my, my, my dad has definitely not learned to accept it, yeah. but um, my relationship with my dad is now um, sort of, not tolerant, but civil. So I did have to distance, distance myself a little bit because of the person he was. But, um, you know, we do have sort of um, conversations rarely where he is still proud of me, but unfortunately he's not proud of my religion. Um, but he is still proud of me and he loves me. And also another sort of thing that is quite difficult is that um, when I first reverted, they'd say, they'd try and turn me on the wrong path. And they'd sort of say, why, why don't you go back to the old you? The old you, like you used to drink and you used to do this. Like, why, why, why can't you, when, when are you gonna turn back? And it took them a long time and it took a lot of strength for me to say to them, this is who I am now. I'm not that person anymore. And I'm not going to turn back. And um, since then, I've not took my hijab off at all. Um, when I had a job, a job interview, um, I wore my hijab and they were saying, oh, I'm so embarrassed, I can't believe you're wearing your hijab and stuff. And, and I said, well, it's part of me. It's part of me. I would say just, um, I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but just, just follow your heart, do your research, find the truth. And with that, you will find happiness. And the more and more you read, the more happy you will become and just talk to other sisters, talk to them about your, um, talk to other Muslims about what you're feeling and what you're experiencing, ask them about their experiences and, and, and how they've become Muslim as well. Um, all I'd say is that don't, don't be scared to do things, you know, um, if, if, if this is the truth, then you should follow it and you should always look to better yourself, yeah. And, and also one last thing, don't be scared to wear the hijab. Don't be scared to wear the hijab, just put it on. Wearing the hijab is the best thing I have done in my life, wallahi. Best thing. I love my hijab. <laughs>
I really loved the retreat. Um, when the, my purpose for coming to this retreat was because um, after the last retreat I went to two years ago, um, I sort of slipped away from, not slipped away from religion, but my, my kind of demand definitely decreased yes. to the point where I was very, almost very hard on myself and very disgusted on myself and how little I was doing for my religion. Um, and when I found out that the retreat was going on, I, I, I instantly signed up, you know, because I thought this retreat helped me so much last time. I know it's going to help me this time as well. Um, and the retreat has been so amazing. What I love most about the retreat is that everyone has emphasised that the religion we are learning is the sunnah. You know, it's not tainted by opinions. It's not tainted by um, maybe culture, difference of opinions. We are learning the true religion. And the speaker um, has been so clear about that. And the speaker has been so um, welcoming and inviting. When we are having our talks and almost our lectures, our education on the religion, it is not boring, it is not dull. He is making it relatable to us. If something, and also what I really appreciate is he's not saying a lot in Arabic. When he needs to, he will, but he kind of uh, refrains from that so we can truly understand everything, uh, sort of what things mean in Arabic as well. Um, and I love learning about the Hadiths. I've learned so much about Hadiths. I've learned so much about the life of the Prophet, the kind of different stages of um, belief in Iman, because I forgot that, you know, um, and also praying together, you know, um, doing these prayer workshops with the sisters. You do forget how I do things. Maybe, um, you know, um, when I was praying, my eyes were in the wrong place or my arms were in the wrong place. But by doing workshops together with sisters, you don't feel judged. And you were all doing it together. You were all learning together. Um, and doing the congregation prayer really does open your heart and soften your heart. And, and, and the sisters all really encourage you to wake up for fudge. That's one of the biggest for me one of the biggest things you know when you're in bed you're comfy you just want to sleep but the sisters encouraging you warmly with the sort of um invitations the reminders put a thumbs up on the group chat having that group chat is just really beneficial um and it just makes you um want to pray so much more so out of this retreat what i've really got is I've achieved what I my why to why I came here I wanted to feel like um, I wanted to feel that feeling when I pray again. I want to establish my prayers again. And I want to build knowledge of Allah and, and, and implement that in my life. And through our workshops, we have learned how to do that. So not only have we learned about names of Allah, we have also learned about, okay, what does this mean to us? And how can we implement this in, in practice in our lives?